So before we start the video, I just want to mention that you can get access to over a thousand medical and USMLE multiple choice questions on our website. New questions are added weekly, so just click the link in the description below to get instant access to them. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Sjogren's Syndrome. So this is an autoimmune disease which mainly affects the moisture producing glands. So the most common symptoms associated with Sjogren's Syndrome are dry eyes and dry mouth. We can classify Sjogren's Syndrome into primary and secondary. So primary is where it is the only cause of the symptoms being present, whereas secondary Sjogren's Syndrome usually occurs alongside another autoimmune disease. And the cause of Sjogren's Syndrome is largely unknown, but it's been speculated that it's due to an environmental cause which triggers the syndrome in those who are genetically susceptible to the disease. And certain sialotropic viruses, that means viruses which target the salivary glands, have been known to trigger Sjogren's Syndrome. And an example of this can be hepatitis C. So how does the disease manifest? So the way Sjogren's syndrome develops is that we have autoantibodies which are produced by the body and they initiate the body to attack its own cells of the glands, particularly the salivary glands and the lacrimal glands. Because of this, we have infiltration of lymphocytes like T-cells and B-cells into the salivary and lacrimal glands. And because of this lymphocytic infiltration, we have the destruction of the gland by cell-mediated mechanisms and the secretion of cytokines. And this creates inflammation in the glands. Eventually, chronic inflammation will develop in the gland and we will have reduced function. This results in the effects and symptoms which is known to those with Sjogren's syndrome. So, in the salivary gland, we have reduced saliva output, leading to a condition called herostomia, which means dry mouth. And in the lacrimal glands of the eye, we have reduced lubrication of the eye, resulting in dry eyes, which is known as keratoconjunctivitis sicca. There are a couple of different ways to diagnose Sjogren's syndrome, so a blood test can be done, which may show the presence of the autoantibodies we mentioned previously. For the eyes, a test known as Schirmer's test is done where filter paper is placed in the lower eyelid for 5 minutes to measure the amount of moisture which is soaking up in the filter paper. So if the length of this damp is less than 5 mm after 5 minutes, this is a sign of Sjogren's syndrome because there is a lower amount of tear production. The amount of saliva is also measured to see if saliva production is normal. An x-ray can also be done to rule out blockage of a salivary duct with a stone or calculi, which is one of the differential diagnoses for Sjogren's syndrome. Also, a biopsy can be taken of one of the glands to check if there's presence of the white blood cell infiltrate, which suggests inflammation. There is no official cure for Sjogren's syndrome, so the treatment involves treating the symptoms of the disease. Medications like pilocarpine can increase saliva production. Eye drops which contain cyclosporin, which is an immunosuppressant, can be given for the dry eyes. Cyclosporin works by reducing the levels of T lymphocytes. Because Sjogren's syndrome is due to immune system hyperreactivity, certain immune suppressing drugs like methotrexate may also be given. Advice is also given to the patient to help with dealing with Sjogren's syndrome. And this includes wearing glasses to reduce drying of the eyes when outside, chewing gum to stimulate saliva production, and increasing fluid intake. There are some dental implications as well with Sjogren's syndrome because kerostomia increases the risk of dental caries. And this is because saliva acts as a buffer against the acid which is produced by bacteria in the mouth. So if we have less saliva, the acid in the mouth is not balanced and therefore, because of the greater acidity, the patient is at more risk of dental caries. 